Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. You are welcome to Online Farm webinar. Today we are hosted by Salve Slapinch, Online Farm member of the management board. Before we proceed with the presentation, I will shortly introduce you with the agenda. Firstly, Salve Slapinch will inform about Online Farm latest activities and analyze the non-audited financial results of the third quarter to 2015. Right after the presentation, we will open the floor for questions. We encourage you to ask questions during the presentation by typing them in the questions section in the right side of the screen. All questions will be addressed after the presentation. Please note that during the presentation, Salves Lapinch will ask your opinion. Please follow the presentation in screen when poll questions are asked. We encourage you to participate. Salvi. I invite you to proceed with the presentation. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's, uh, it's nice to see still somebody not totally in Christmas mood, although, of course, the number of attendees is um, unusually low. Uh, so, therefore, very special thanks to uh, all that are still with us and interested in what we are doing and what we plan to do. Um, so, and um, yeah, um, let, let, us, uh, let us begin. Uh, so as usual, I'll uh, I'll start with a uh, um, brief review of uh, third quarter. So uh, sales in third quarter uh, about two, 22 million euros. Uh, this is the in terms of sales, as you can see, this is the best third quarter we have ever had. Uh, we have grown by a little more than two percent uh, compared to uh, last year. Uh, Gross sales of pharmacies during this, this period were 4.3 million euros, and uh, after consolidation correction, they contribu contributed about 2 million to overall sales. And uh, Silvanos sold products worth 1.2 million, and the consolidation correction for Silvanos is a bit smaller, so they added about slightly more than a million um, uh, to the sales, um, consolidated sales. Uh, looking at the um, uh, profit figures, uh, you can see that this is a uh, declining uh, profit in uh, Q3 separately. It's been declining for third year in a row, uh, factors being different, um, beginning with uh, forex loss in different periods and sometimes uh, provisions and uh, overall since the pharmacies are playing a bigger role. Uh, in our overall, overall sales, uh, and as you know, they have small margins, so they are also diluting the uh, uh, the margins, and therefore, uh, whereas um, as you just saw, our sales per quarter, in third quarter, have been growing. The profitability, unfortunately, isn't performing as nice. Uh, if you look at uh, EBITDA and EBITDA margin for 12-month rolling, uh, this has been a nice quarter. We are pretty much back on on the high levels that we are. Uh, talking about slightly above 24 million euros in 12-month uh, rolling. Um, this is the sort of second best 12-month rolling period in corporate history. And knowing that last quarter normally is reasonably good uh, if no uh, forex situations or otherwise you know, uh, unexpected situations occur, uh, then we have some reasons to believe that uh, up next um, quarter, we might have uh, actually a new 12-month rolling EBITDA record. Uh, yeah, and I think uh, we are about to have our first um, uh, poll now. Uh, last night, if you could uh, place it. Um, yeah, in the meantime, please uh, please take your time to vote. Uh, basically, this is a very uh, usual, uh, let's say, traditional routine, maybe even boring question that I that I keep asking all the time. It is about um, how do you uh, what do you think about our um, performance this quarter? Uh, our, our results are what you expected. Uh, are they uh, just as expected, or worse uh, than expected, or better than expected? Uh, please uh, take your time to, uh, to vote. I uh, believe we'll a few a uh, few more seconds for that. Uh, in the meantime, I can see that number of attendees is growing, which is uh, which is good, and we have, uh, judging by the name, we have a first um, Lithuanian joining us. Hello, Vaswakaras, to you. Um, and uh, yeah, I think uh, we should be with, uh, with voting now. 
Right, uh, and if you look separately at the um, sales per country in uh, Q3 level, um, so uh, in these three months we have had 14 countries in different months among our top 10 markets. Um, Russia share uh, has rebounded to 33 percent, and uh, Q2 it was about 30 percent. Latvia is stable with 24 percent. Um, Ukraine and uh, Belarus have uh, regained uh, one percentage point uh, each, so grown up group. Uh, orders of the WHA have not been that big in Q3, so they're sort of down to 4% only, but they are sort of replaced by a bigger share to Central Asian countries. You see Kazakhstan at 3% and Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan also among top 10 countries um, in this period. Uh, if you look at um, products, um, basically this situation here hasn't changed much. But amino um, salicylic acid, which we normally ship to WHO, uh, in, in most parts we ship to WHO, uh, is reasonably big, uh, 14%. Uh, as you remember in previous slide, Netherlands, that's where the logistics center of WHO is located, uh, have fallen a little. Uh, that's the reason being that uh, it's not only WHO who is buying this product from us, so we had shipments to other other countries of, um, uh, of, of this product. So products remain reasonably stable and is uh, number three product of ours. Uh, Neuromedin is still at 19%. Nufen and pyramid uh, salicylic acid grown a little bit by two percentage point, uh, points each. Adaptol and Furgen, uh, Furgen both uh, remain stable at uh, 12 and 4% uh, respect uh, respectively. Um, since we didn't have any shipments of monoacetyl glucose, and that's a product we ship to the UK normally, that product is out of top 10. But for the first time in our history, we have memantine. The product that we announced about five years ago, we have memantine in our top 10 list with a 2% uh, share. Uh, others uh, in uh, Q2, there I believe it was uh, there were 12%. They had 12% share. Uh, this quarter they have only 9%, meaning the concentration uh, of of products is uh, is greater. So now, if we go to nine months, um, in nine months we sold uh, 72 million euros, or uh, it's very easy to calculate this year. It's 72% of our annual target. Uh, slightly behind the linear schedule. I mean, it's three quarters of a year should be 75%, so a little bit behind. But the last quarter is normally quite nice in terms of sales, so we believe we still have some chance to catch up. Um, we have uh, demonstrated a slight increase in terms of sales by about 3% compared to last year. As you remember, Q2 wasn't as successful, but Q1 was nice and Q2 was nice, so we still are ahead of, of last year's sales, so in our best, the best nine months so far. Uh, some pharmacies uh, made a gross sales of 12.2 million euros in this period, and about half of that uh, went for consolidation. Uh, Silonals made sales of 2.9 million, and uh, almost all of that went into consolidation, as uh, consolidation correction for Silonals is, is, is reasonably small. If you look at profits, it's 12.1 um, million euros in nine months, uh, basically flat compared to last year. 81% um, of guidance met. Um, we believe that if, if, if nothing happens like it did last year, uh, we are sure that we are, will be well, at least very, very, very close uh, to the profit target of 15 million. Uh, also, uh, we are more than sure that we will uh, have a better, uh, we will set the profit uh, record, because as you remember last year, because of Forex uh, situation, we made virtually no profit in the last uh, quarter of the year. Uh, and uh, now I believe this could be a good time to have our next poll regarding um, what do you think um, about our uh, sales and profits guidances? Are we, um, are we uh, in a position to meet them? Uh, are we going to outperform them or maybe are going to meet, you know, let's say, sales targets and not meet profit targets, uh, please take um, take your time, take a few seconds uh, to cast a vote. In the meantime, I see that number of attendees is 
Thanks, Gore, again. Um, hello, Andre. Um, nice to see you. Um, you missed a little bit, but uh, I believe you'll be able to see the thing later on in, in YouTube. Yeah. In the meantime, please uh, please take take a few more seconds for vote, uh, and then we'll proceed to the next slides. Thank you. <clears throat> Thanks for voting. Now, uh, yeah, let me see where has the uh, growth come from. Uh, now, let's first have a look at our products. And the picture here isn't that terribly nice. Uh, we basically see that only five of top 15 products are growing. Uh, and, if, of course, it has been para amino salicylic acid, which has saved the day uh, with 5.5 uh, million euro growing. Uh, let me remind you that here we all may talk, talk about all our farm products. And, um, I mean, of course, there is um, uh, uh, performance of pharmacies and performance of silvanos uh, that, that is uh, making some adjustments to this. Besides uh, barium uh, nesolicic acid, the other good growers are quinoclidinol, or full name would be 3-quinoclidinol hydrochloride, which is our number 14 product that has gone by 350,000 euros. Ethicine is our what number six product that has grown by uh, 190, and Memantine, the, the the newcomer which has performed quite well, especially in Q3, has grown by 136 uh, thousand euros in uh, nine months. But then uh, there are some pieces of bad news. Uh, Northern, one of the former best sellers of ours, well still a best seller of ours, has not been performing as nicely, uh, and uh, has. Uh, fallen by uh, 2.1 million euros compared to nine months of last year. Four again with Forest, uh, four again um, has uh, fallen by seven, uh, 670,000. Uh, and Adopt Adoptol, one of uh, another you know, good sellers of ours, has uh, also shown by 615,000. Uh, most of declines have, are deriving from um, uh, not as good sales in Russia, Ukraine, and Belarus. But then again, for those of you who keep following our monthly sales, you see that especially Ukraine has bounced back very nicely in two months following uh, Q3 in October and November. So in uh, last quarter that will make um, some adjustment uh, to the performance of our uh, best-selling products and I believe that uh, maybe next webinar I should really focus on performance of key products in, in key countries. If you look at countries, which countries was the growth coming from? The picture here isn't uh, is much nicer. Uh, I see nine out of fifteen countries growing, and uh, as you know, as after Q3, I just told uh, Ukraine has been growing as well. So um, that 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 will uh, change to in the uh, remaining month. Uh, so uh, Ukraine was falling in nine months, but it's not falling anymore. Um, other uh, countries are still falling, of course, are Belarus. UK, Uzbekistan, and Poland, uh, but both Belarus and Poland are catching up a little bit. Um, in nominal terms, the, the top growers are the Netherlands, of course, that's the uh, WHO um, order. They've grown by 3.2 million euros. Latvia has grown by 1.3 million euros. All other countries have grown by 43,000. And Germany, that's the buyer of uh, some of our chemical products, has grown by 350,000. Uh, so you see Germany here being our top 15 um, country in these nine months. Uh, top decliners in nominal terms during this period are, are Ukraine, uh, 1.5 million euros as of uh, end of September. But as I said, this has now reversed. Russia was falling by 760,000 euros, Belarus by 400,000 euros, and Poland uh, also slightly above 400,000 uh, euros. Uh, again, uh, here situation does not look as sort of bad because a uh, number of non LN farm products are being sold in the system, including both silvanols and, of course, including our uh, pharmacy uh, network. Now, um, what has happened since our last uh, webinar? One of the last things, but most least things, we have a replacement uh, in our board. Uh, Long term board member, Ms. Inga Vishika, uh, submitted her uh, resignation. Uh, she's been with the company since 2000 and made a very good career from Deputy Chief Accountant to CFO. Uh, 
Uh, and uh, Mariana Ivanova-Yuseva was elected by the council to be the new board member on November 16th. Uh, she is 33. She has degrees in public and uh, business administration, has uh, project management and even parliamentary experience. Um, also, most, among things that has happened uh, since the last webinar, uh, one thing that we announced in the last webinar was our now, uh, you could say, traditional Baltic Nordic Roadshow. And uh, I um, want to uh, ask you to put now a next uh, poll question because that's pretty much related uh, to this roadshow. Um, thank you. Uh, so there, during during the trip, uh, we had more than 20 meetings, uh, and uh, in some cities we had more interest, and uh, but simply due to the schedule, could not have them all. Uh, and this has been our second October end sort of Baltic Nordic roadshow. Uh, we see the interest is there, uh, and, and, and uh, maybe uh, we should probably add. Uh, more towns. Uh, this year, just as last year, we only visited Tallinn, Helsinki, Stockholm, and Munich. Uh, for a number of reasons, we are thinking of either Oslo or, or Warsaw being added to, to the route. Uh, yeah, and the question is, um, did we meet with you in uh, end of October during the uh, uh, during roadshow? Uh, and uh, please mark if, if we did. Uh, uh, or if you didn't, please specify was that because uh, that wasn't possible because of schedule, or was it because you didn't want to, or uh, maybe you simply didn't know about the roadshow. Yeah, and again, uh, yeah, we are we are really um, glad and thankful to all of you who uh, who met us during the trip, and um, uh, we would be very uh, very glad that you could continue because uh, we see the interest is there, and uh, yes, yeah, certainly. Uh, somewhere at the end of October 2016, we are uh, we are uh, going on a similar uh, similar trip again. So I'll let you a few more seconds. Okay, a few more seconds are yeah great. Uh, so uh, thanks for uh, thanks thanks for your applies. Uh, let's let's continue. Um, also um, some some good news uh, that has happened during our last uh, webinar. We gotten three awards. Um, in, in three months, so not bad. Um, one of them is Red Jackets Award, which is uh, a new um, um, initiative here to celebrate uh, exporting companies. So we got the Red Jackets uh, Export Excellence Award. Latvian uh, companies won top 101 special award for the biggest increase of companies value in 10 years. Is not the award that we gotten. According to value calculations that uh, that they were um, uh, making, uh, value of oil farm, oil farm in a ten-year period has increased um, more than 20 times. Uh, and also, we were celebrated as the best employer in Riga region. Uh, another award that we have gotten during this uh, three months. Now, um, that's pretty much with the sort of formal official. Uh, routine part uh, of the webinar. Now uh, it's time for our uh, sort of uh, focus feature. And uh, for this quarter, I thought uh, Sylvanos has playing increase, is playing increasingly important role in uh, consolidated uh, figures. Uh, recently, they've been setting one sales record after another. Um, it's uh, sl slightly more than two years, roughly two and a half years, since we acquired our first share in the company. Uh, so I thought that, uh, and haven't been really spoken about their uh, news in, in any of the webinars. Uh, so I decided that um, we should focus a little more uh, on them this time. Yeah, so uh, for those who know you who follow, uh, have been following our um, uh, Silver Nose sort of development. Uh, you may know this, but for the others, uh, let, let me give you some, some uh, probably with some background. Uh, at the end of 2002, uh, that was after we sort of felt comfortable with our first uh, pharmacy investments. Uh, sort of we, 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 you know, we established a sort of development system for pharmacies. We identified that food supplements probably would be next uh, next area, next place to invest. And uh, soon after that, of course, we identified Silvanos, which is a leading Latvian food supplement producer. 
as a potential target. Um, we got engaged in reasonably lengthy negotiations, which took uh, uh, slightly more than six months. Uh, but the end of uh, end of May 2013, uh, we acquired the first part of Silmos shares. At that time, we only acquired 47.5%. But a month later, we increased our holdings to 17.9, so almost 71. And one year later, uh, we acquired another another set of shares, uh, and uh, therefore increased our holdings to 96.7% uh, of Silver Notes' capital. And this is the uh, share we still hold there. Uh, in total, we paid 4.15 uh, billion uh, euros uh, in that acquisition. So, uh, Silvanos is a leading food supplement producer here. It produces pills, capsules, gels, drops, sprays, balsams, syrups, and medical devices of other type. It's uh, located in Riga, Latvia. Uh, and this year, the expected sales are approximately 4.4 million euros. And we expect the after tax profit of uh, 400,000 uh, euros. Uh, currently, the bank loans they're having are worth 1.1 million euros. Um, they're selling to 14 countries so far, uh, as of uh, up to um, November, but two more have been added. Uh, and they are promoting 32 brands in the Baltics, and their CEO is Mr. Artem Borsovs, uh, having financial uh, background, it's coming from Ernst & Young in Luxembourg, and uh, here you can see him in one of the company's publicity uh, pictures. So what are the main developments since we took the company over? Um, in 2013, the company made sales of 3.5 million euros, and this year we are very close to reaching a target of 4.4. In 2013, they're only selling to nine markets. In 2015, they are selling to 16 markets. Uh, in 2013, the non-Baltic exposure was only 16%, so it was really the Baltic ruled company. Uh, and now it's 26%. Uh, board members uh, in uh, that time had, uh, they had reasonably heavy administration, they had five board members, now reduced to three. Uh, in 2013, they made a pre-tax loss of 70,000 euros. In 11 months of this year, they have made pre-tax profit of 400,000 euros already. So there has been some turnaround. And uh, just to visually show it, you see some sort of change in the packaging as well, so the appearance also. Uh, has changed, and the company has been rebranded. Um, so um, this is how its new uh, new logo looks now. Uh, looks now. And uh, last year, when it was launched, uh, it went soon uh, received the award of Latvian Chamber of Commerce, and uh, was was named trademark of the year. Uh, well, I'd like to talk about the awards. I mean, this is like third slide on awards in this presentation. Um, yeah. Should, should talk to my shrink about this. But anyway, one of the company's best-selling products, Asmosil, last year was named the most innovative product of Latvia in 2014 by Latvian Investment and Development Agency. Uh, and the company itself, uh, its um, input in promotion of healthy lifestyle, healthy uh, pharmaceuticals, healthy approaches to your treatment was celebrated. And uh, during the ceremony of Latvian Health Award, they get a special, a special um, um, award for that. So let's look at the sales. These are our sales since we took the company over from May, well, since we acquired the first uh, first chunk of shares there. Um, so uh, in May, so we're starting from May 2013. Um, the company uh, can quite easily see that July and August are clearly the two monthly worst sales, and then again. September, October, November, December is normally much better performance. Uh, the reason being that the company, uh, and you'll show it in later slides as well, the company is uh, quite heavily, still quite heavily exposed to cough and cold segment. Uh, and of course, that adds to seasonality as, as getting coughs and colds in, in September, October, November, so of course, a much, much bigger chance than in, than in summer month. Uh, in November, as you can see from this chart, they set the sales record of 580,000 euros uh, never had that big sales, uh, and 11 month, 11 month, they've been growing by uh, almost 30 percent compared to last year, and of course much much more compared to previous years. So if you look at the products, and uh, since in different uh, 
countries, and in food supplements, changing the recipe, changing the product is much, much, of course, easier than it is for the sort of classic uh, pharmaceuticals. Uh, therefore, in different markets, they, of course, operate uh, different, with different uh, uh, recipes. But uh, for the Baltics, these recipes are pretty much similar. Uh, and this is the Baltic um, pie chart uh, for Indospray. Uh, is of course the clear leader. More than a third of the Baltic sales are made uh, with this product. Uh, Atherin is, is, is following with 14% and, and Relax in the number three runner is 7%. Um, is, uh, and I've been looking at how these different products are, uh, or, or how the sales of different products are uh, um, changing in different, uh, Baltic, uh, different Baltic countries. Uh, Farigo Spray is a clear leader both in Latvia and Lithuania. Whereas Atherin, uh, which is an anti-cholesterol product, uh, Farigo spray being, being really a uh, sore throat product. Uh, so Atherin being anti-cholesterol product is number one product in Estonia. The same Atherin is number two in Latvia and Lithuania, while Relaxin, which is, judging by the name, is of course the Relaxin, is, uh, is the number two product in Estonia. And uh, Relaxin again is, is third in, in Lithuania. Laringo spray, uh, it's not the Laringo spray, is third in Lithuania, but Faringo spray, the overall leader, is only third in, in Estonia. Uh, and here you see that six out of ten best selling products, or 59% of sales, are made in the cold segment. Now, since I believe most of uh, attendees of the webinar are from Baltic countries, let me ask you the next polling question. Uh, since um, uh, since uh, Silenos is uh, mostly the food supplement company and uh, reasonably popular in the Baltics, let me ask you which one of the Silenos' products uh, is the, the one you used most recently? Is it Franco Spray, Atherin, Relaxin, or maybe it's something else, or maybe you haven't used any of that? Um, please um, uh, take, take some time uh, and, and cast your vote. Uh, would be interesting also from the marketing point of view. In the meantime, we can see the number of attendees is up to 17. So uh, yeah, maybe maybe by the end of uh, end of the webinar, we can set uh, we can set a new uh, attendance record. Uh, yeah, but anyway, since, since of course these uh, webinars are widely available um, in, in YouTube, uh, we see the number of online attendees, of course, falling. But uh, we see that the views on YouTube are growing, so overall interest is obviously still there. So uh, thank you for that. Um, yeah, and thanks for voting. Um, we'll see the, see the numbers and uh, see uh, what Silicon Oils' marketing people have to say about that. Uh, and then uh, let's um, move on to the countries. Um, you see the um, Baltic exposure is uh, still great. Uh, Latvian exposure, even Latvian exposure is still great. You see 57% of silver sales, sale, your sales in 11 months is made in the home country of Latvia, and 73% in the Baltics. Um, several countries have been added very, very recently, uh, and those are Ukraine, uh, Greece, and Russia. And uh, we only have Greece among the top 10 countries. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and Ukraine and Russia hasn't even made it to top 10. But we, of course, have all the reasons to believe that we can make big enough sales for them to show up. So and the um, agent, we just, uh, they just signed an, an agreement, agency agreement, with the Scandinavian partner. And uh, so most of products are being evaluated for several Balkan countries. So we believe that um, there is a lot of growth potential, uh, which is just starting or which is just being assessed. So um, I believe that uh, uh, Latin Baltic exposure will, will uh, inevitably um, uh, be reduced, and uh, many many more new countries uh, will be added. The number of export markets uh, next time we talk about zones, I believe, will be much much greater than, than 16. So let's some, uh, some, some look at the preliminary financials for this year. Uh, this is comparison of 11 month with 11 month. So um, see in, in uh, slightly more than two years, a lot has been changed in the company. And uh, this, is, this is really the first since company was engaged in, in uh, heavily engaged 
in, in, in different uh, participation in different uh, research projects. Uh, even some previous years when they did demonstrate profits, they were not necessarily the normal operating profits. They're pretty much derived from participation uh, and um, and all sorts of um, sorts of uh, research and uh, similar projects. Now this is the first year really when we have a decent profit. You see the next uh, the net uh, net margin being more than 10 percent, uh, even above 11. Um, uh, so this is the first year when we have that sizable net profit deriving purely from um, operations. Uh, that of course is a um, direct result from having many more markets, uh, you know, totally different volume of sales, uh, more efficiency there, more efficient sales. You see the selling costs have all increased only a little uh, compared to last year. Uh, administrative costs have actually been reduced by you know, almost 20 percent, uh, and and that that whole thing results in, of course, much much nicer, uh, much much nicer uh, operating uh, profits and pre-tax profits uh, for the period. So here we're talking about 11 month, uh, and you know, here we're talking about pre-tax profits. So we have one more month, most likely a profitable month ahead of us. But we, of course, will have to do um, uh, the, 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 the tax deductions as well. So what they've done in this year, as I said, the launching new product in food supplement sector uh, segments is, is much easier. Uh, and also, I wanted to take this opportunity to do some marketing for Silvanos. Uh, so they launched uh, four new products um, uh, this year. Uh, Farigo spread, their most uh, well-selling, best-selling uh, brand, has a line extension, with the mint pepper and flavor version of it. Uh, Brinogels is another line extension of theirs, so this is uh, uh, sort of um, yeah. Brinogel, oh, yeah, gel for, for, for your running nose with more more convenient application. And they have two brand new products. One of them is Venolux, which is natural relief for sort of so-called tired leg symptoms. And Neonero, where we come up that, with that weird name. Anyway, it's a combination of vitamins B and natural extracts for relief of neurologic pain. Uh, you know, the sort of pain uh, arising from, from, from irritated nerves. Yes, so, uh, and um, it's, uh, it's a very special time of year, and so it's Christmas year, and uh, best wishes from uh, all our family, our family in this case being Latvia, Slavdiv, Saptika. Uh, Silvanos and uh, of course uh, Owen Farm as well. And yeah, that's that's it from me. And uh, I'll be glad to uh, uh, answer all your uh, your questions if you have any. Salvi, thank you for the presentation and thank you for Christmas greetings. Uh, now I will proceed with the questions in the order they were received. But before, I would like to remind you that you can still send in your questions on the questions section on the right side of your screen. So I will proceed with the first question, which is uh, what plans do you have for 2016 by Investigate? Not sure if I understood the question, Salvi, maybe you can answer it. Yeah, my, yeah both plans, I'll, 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 I'll cut it short in the middle. Then, then it's fine. Uh, what, what, plans, uh, what plans do we have for 2016? Uh, uh, not much I can really disclose at the moment. Uh, we do plan some minor growth, uh, minor organic growth, uh, but uh, we expect that, uh, that more growth uh, will be coming from, from some acquisitions. I keep telling about this, and every time I'm telling about this, I know that there are some more things have happened in that direction. Um, so I'd say we we do not um, we'll be happy with the minor organic growth, which would then be strengthened by some inorganic growth. Uh, but you know, the most we still have a lot of exposure, more than 50% exposure to CIS markets, even in, even in, in consolidated terms, uh, and. Um, uh, and those markets are not necessarily uh, very stable. I mean, the, 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 you know, the, the currency situation, the economic situation, the protectionist approaches are changing quite frequently. So uh, we are sort of reviewing 
what our different options in different markets are. But uh, the sort of internal consensus is that that uh, we'd be very really glad to achieve uh, at least a minor organic growth. That, that's really all I can tell you at the moment. Last one. Thank you, Sally, for answer. I hope the person who asked uh, received it. Next question. Medicine produced in Latvia constitutes a tiny proportion from the total medicine sales in Latvia, below 10%. Why it is so low? How to improve the situation with advertising, with takeover of pharmacy stores, or work with doctors, or maybe other options? Salvi? Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's a very accurate observation. Um, I'm not sure which your data it is, but uh, in Sweden, for instance, they have about 40% of products being produced in Sweden. Um, basically, the the biggest role is is played by uh, a typical um, commodity generics producer. Like, you know, vast majority of things sold in pharmacies are you know your traditional commodity generics. You know, ibuprofen and paracetamols and vitamin C and, and things like that. Um, and you know, um, for that you need Economies of scale, we need the volume. I mean, uh, even all the Baltic markets combined are no match for, let's say, the same Swedish market. Um, and, and, and these markets, on top of that, are very price sensitive. Um, I don't think there could be, I mean, one thing that could help, of course, and I've been talking about this a number of occasions, is if, if Baltic countries, uh, or uh, let's say pharmaceutical authorities, Baltic countries finally agree on the principle that product registered in one of Baltic countries is automatically registered in three Baltic countries. That would reduce a lot of uh, a lot of uh, administrative uh, of regulatory burden for the producers. Um, and uh, at least on sort of Baltic level, we could therefore be probably able to to raise this uh, ratio. I mean, currently, yes, it's below 10%. It's actually around five. So it's even much, it's much below 10%. So maybe in the Baltic level we could at least uh, increase this a little. Uh, but the question really is in volumes. I mean, we could, we have technical capacities to produce most of things that you buy in your, your pharmacies. But uh, uh, you know, uh, it only makes financial sense if you can sell it to to bigger, bigger uh, population. Uh, yeah. What, what, what? Yeah, take over pharmacy stores. Um, that helps. To some, uh, to some, to some extent, because um, you know um, there are many ibuprofens in Latvia, and uh, and uh, sometimes pharmacists are uh, interested to uh, promote one one type of product or another type of product, not necessarily the local one. That could add something, but that's of course not uh, not the you know, the the ultimate solution. Uh, so I don't believe we'd ever be able to reach like 40% ratio as it is in in Sweden, as I said. But I believe by, by number of things, not least uh, easing the regulatory burden, uh, we could, at least on a Baltic level, get this to 10, 15% at least. That, that's, my, that's my thinking about it. Uh, Lasma? Salve, thank you for an answer given. I can see that we have one more question. What do you think about the current stock price? Is it correct? Well, you know, being a, a, an IR person, um, it's only it's only one kind of answer I could give. Um, but that's not only because I'm I'm uh, I'm biased. I mean, I really, if you, if you look at all the multiples, and if you compare us to the Eastern European peers, uh, you would see that uh, on average we are like half the price. Um, so uh, I'm I'm a strong believer that uh, I mean. If all conditions stay the same, there's only one way the share should go. Uh, then again, uh, we are reasonably small share. We are talking about 30 million free float only at the moment. Uh, we are reasonably illiquid markets. Um, you know, we are in a market which doesn't even always qualify as frontier market. Uh, and of course, for that, you need to give a discount. And uh, we, of course, would like to hope that the discount is not that huge, 
but um, yeah, that's what the market uh, market says. Um, like I said, I mean, if you look at the medium medium term development possibilities and, and strategies for flowing power, that will increasingly include uh, acquisitions, and uh, maybe some of the acquisitions would ask us to do some rights issues, uh, leading to having a bigger free float, thus bigger liquidity, uh, and uh, that might eventually you know, reduce that discount that we are currently giving to investors. Uh, I was speaking in, you know, in sort of semi-metaphors. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, I believe that, uh, I'm a strong believer that in, in other conditions, in other markets, in other, uh, other um, free floats and, uh, you know, other liquidities, so our price should, um, well, my multiple show that our price could be uh, basically almost twice as high as it is at the moment. Asma? So, thank you. All questions that have been sent in are answered by now, but maybe we can wait a couple of minutes. Maybe somebody is typing in. I remind you that you can send in your question in the question section, which is located in the pan on the right side of your screen. So if somebody has any, uh, if somebody have any questions, please uh, tap them in. We will wait a bit. In the previous format, we were able to see if anybody is typing, but that's probably not possible here, is it? It's not the case no. here, so we will, yes, wait, maybe somebody is typing, and then we will proceed with the last final information. No? Okay, not to took you so long. Uh, you can contact Salvis after the webinar about any questions you may have on the contacts that are presented in the screen. Uh, I also remind you that the re recorded presentation will be available on Nasdaq Baltic YouTube channel, webinar playlist, and investors portal notes.lv. Salvi, thank you for the presentation and for answers given. Participants, thank you for joining. Uh, thank you very much, and indeed, uh, all the best wishes for Christmas. Um, we have a prosperous and uh, not least a healthy year. And uh, in case uh, you should still need some medication, of course, you know the right producers, the right pharmacies. Uh, take care, take care, good care, and uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to you. Thank you.